Hello, I'm Alex Mills, and I will be doing my Unit 3 Reflection for Introduction to Disability Studies. An overview of the topics I will be discussing. Topic 1 is Introduction to Universal Design. Topic 2 is Seven Principles of Universal Design. Topic 3 is Example of Universal Design at UMW. Topic 4 is Example of UMW Not Exhibiting Universal Design. And Topic 5 is Who Should We Think About When Designing Things? There are many ways to promote accessibility in the school environment, but there are a few concepts that are important when it comes to increasing accessibility. Universal design is a concept that states that the environment should be designed and created in a way that is accessible to all people, regardless of age, size, ability, or disability. All environments should be accessible to all abilities. There are seven principles of universal design. The first one is equitable use. This means providing the same means of use for all users. Also, ways to maintain privacy, security, and safety. It should be equally available to all users. Finally, it is important to make the design appealing to all users. So you want people to want to use the things we create. The next principle is flexibility and use. So this means providing options and methods of use. Also facilitate the user's accuracy and precision. You want it to work well right off the bat. Provide adaptability to the user's pace. So everyone does things at their own pace. So it is important to keep in mind. Um, so for example, using an automatic door button and the door shuts on you before you get through. That's a failing universal design in this principle. The next principle is simple and you intuitive use. So in eliminate unnecessary complexity. You wanna be consistent with user expectations and intuitions. For instance, you wanna be able to walk up to a door and figure out how to use it without being confused. Additionally, you want to accommodate for a wide range of literacy and language skills. Arrange information consistent with its importance, so you also want to be concise with the information provided, and provide effective prompting and feedback during the task completion, so you do not want to wonder if it worked or not. You want perceptible information, so use different modes, so pictorial, verbal, tactile, for presentation of essential info. Provide adequate contrast between essential information and its surroundings. You want to maximize legibility of essential information and provide compatibility with a variety of techniques or devices used by people with sensory limitations. The next principle is tolerance for error, so you want it easy to do, hard to mess up. So arrange elements to minimize hazards and errors and provide ex explicit warnings for hazards and errors if they can occur. Make sure to provide fail safe features and discourage unconscious action and tasks that require vigilance. So make sure you're not setting people up for failure. Another principle is to have low physical effort. Allow users to maintain a neutral body position. They shouldn't have to contort themselves in some weird way and use reasonable operating forces. So for instance, have elevators that have duplicated set of buttons for people to reach at different heights. So if they're in a wheelchair, they don't have to reach up in some awkward position to get it. So minimize repetitive actions. You do not want to make someone do something a bunch of times and minimize the need for sustained physical effort. The last principle is size for approach and use. So you want to be able to, for people to be in any position to be able to have access to important information or instructions and have ability to reach all components comfortably from a seated or standing position. You want to provide adequate space for use of mobility aids or caregivers. So those were just an overview of all the principles. So now we're going to be talking about, um, now that we learned about universal design, we're going to implement this knowledge by thinking about places that we are familiar with. So for instance, the Cedric Rucker University Center is a newer building at UMW and has a lot of examples of universal design. So looking at the equitable use principle, the CRUC has multiple accessible entrances that can be appealing and used by everyone. Also, it has examples of meeting the low physical effort principle. So the dining hall now has napkin dispensers at almost every table, which prevents people having to get up and down for additional napkins. An example of simple intuitive use principle in the CRUC are most doors have automatic door opening buttons that are labeled and obviously placed. Also, when it comes to where people put their dirty dishes in the, use, the CRUC, there's a conveyor belt that has multiple levels. So people of varying heights and accessibility aids can use this and people know instinctively or with visual cues on how to use it. Um, examples of the size and space of prayer approach and use principle in the CRUC are the CRUC has movable furniture such as chairs and tables. This is great for people with different handiness and people that use mobility aids and wheelchairs. And again, the dish disposal with multiple levels. Um, additionally, the foyer of the CRUC provides a lot of open space for places uh, for people to put mobility aids. 
However, in class, we talked about how historic buildings sometimes struggle to meet the different principles of universal design. And an example of this is also at UMW with one of the older buildings named Madison. Madison does not have elevators, which goes against the flexibility and equitable use principle. Additionally, the entrances require stairs to get to the door, which also goes against the flexibility and equitable use principle. Like most buildings on campus, Madison has door alarms that go off when the door is held open for too long, which can be stressful and alarming, and especially for people that go through the door at their own pace or have to bring a lot of things in through the door. Also, Madison has no or very few automatic door opening buttons. This goes against equitable use, but also the low physical effort principle. I remember it was talked about in class how when some students enter Madison and it has and they have mobility aids, they have to contort their bodies in a way that allows them to open a heavy door while trying to get their aids through the door. So thinking about universal design in college campus or even designing things in the in society it brings forth the debate that we discussed in class of whether we should design for disabilities or design for everyone some people may say that we should design for people with disabilities because these individuals are already overlooked and if people are not making active efforts to create a more accessible future for them they will be forgotten about however some people believe that we should design for everyone because accessibility has the potential to benefit everyone I lean more towards the la latter one because I feel like if we're designing for all people, we're designing for people th with varying accessibility needs. We talked about in class how accessibility helps everyone. It impacts everyone and makes people's lives easier and do things that they couldn't do before. So I, I personally go design for everyone. All right, these are my references and thank you so much for watching.